Yeah, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Let's meet the team. This is an agile team, a cross-functional team that's been working together for quite some time. They are actually a cross-functional team, including the development team, the development, uh, the DevOps team, and also the business side. And after some uh, real struggle with the with the, uh, the office team, they've actually been able to co-locate. They have been running in a scrum setup for a while, so of course at the end of every sprint they meet for a retrospective. They go through what has been working good, what's been working bad, and they collect suggestions on how to improve. But many of the suggestions are pointing in many different directions. And there's no real common direction for everything. And some of the improvements that they actually managed to do, it's like the whack-a-mole game. You whack one down, and then you whack another one, and then it comes up again. So there's no real improvement. So stop collecting problems and start thinking about how you can really start improving in a common direction. So my suggestion is stop doing maybe the traditional retrospective and start doing Toyota Kata. So who am I? I'm a Lean and Agile coach from Avega Group. I've been working with uh, Scrum, Agile, some XP for quite some time. And for the last years, I've been more or less bitten by the lean bug to expand uh, the agile way of working. I'm also using the Kanban method as a way to improve the processes, both in the development department, uh, the DevOps way, and also in uh, some of the business units. This quote, to improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often, from Winston Churchill, is something that I often use with the teams and organizations I coach. So if we look at traditional ways of doing process improvement, or improvement, improvement in general, you usually start by thinking and analyzing about the problem. You spend quite some time doing that. Then you do. You actually try to implement what you have thought of. You've been doing this big, big uh, pre-study, and you do, and you think you're finished. So this is more of a traditional way of doing improvements. But if you look at the lean approach of doing improvements, it's more about you think. Yes, it's very important to think about and analyze the problem, understanding where you are but it's even more to, important to do. You execute, and based on what happens when you execute, you feed back into your thinking and change your thinking. You do again, and you do this over and over again on a daily basis. You could really look at improvement as experiments. So I'm starting to using the term experiments more than I do improvements, because that gives you the option to actually not improve when you try something. And experiments, you use it like you formulate a hypothesis. You have an idea how you think you're going to make an improvement. You actually try to make a prediction what would happen when you do execute this hypothesis. And this is an important part, that you actually try to figure out what would happen when you execute this. Then you run the experiment. This is the big part. Then you make observation as you execute. And you compare what was your prediction to the observations. And this is the big learning opportunity. So what is the difference between what you predicted would happen and what actually happened? And if you really think about it, if you think about that every 50% of the experiments, 
you actually uh, wanted to not give the result that you were expecting, because that is actually the only situation you really learn something new. Because if your experiments on a hypothesis always is true, you're really just late to implementing that. So what do continuous really mean? My belief is batching up improvement work into the retrospective every other week, every third week, every fourth week, or whatever, is not continuous. It's the traditional batch thinking. I think the teams and the whole organization, they should have at least one experiment running all the time. And that means that you have ev something active uh, at every moment. At least one experiment running in your team, in your uh, department, in your leadership team, uh, at the board, and all the way through the organization. So your daily work should really be two parts. It should be delivering value. It should also be improving the way of working. And you should really see yourself as gardeners of how you work. You need to keep the process nice and tidy, pulling the weeds out. Otherwise, the problems in your process will grow back. So this is definitely true for our garden at home. I actually outsource the work of keeping the weeds out. Uh, but someone ne needs to do it. So let's do an experiment here. Let's try to cross your arms if you have not done that already. It's not that hard, right? Let's try to do it the other way around. Feels a little bit awkward. It's the two, two same arms. We're just not used to doing it. But if we would do that every day, the other way around, it would actually feel more natural. And this is the same thing with uh, working with improvement, continuous improvement work. So we need to rewire our brains to get into a continuous improvement mode. And Toyota Kata is this rewiring. So what is a Kata? Do we have anybody here doing martial arts? I think so, yeah? So what's a Kata? You do the same thing over and over again, uh, so you can perfect it. So, uh, why would you like to perfect it, the movements in the kata? Yep, and it's familiar, so when you come into a situation, uh, you do it by reflexes. So it's really about creating, uh, in terms of Toyota Kata, we want to uh, create a muscle memory for continuous improvement. So we don't have to think about it. We don't have to reflect at every stage how we do the improvement work. That doesn't mean that we do the same improvement work all the time, but the pattern how we execute it is the same. So it will be, feel very familiar for you. Here's another pattern. Uh, not the pattern, but uh, uh, a quote. We are what we repeatedly do. So excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So we need to create habits of this continuous, uh, continuous improvement. And the Toyota Kara has two Karas, two main Karas, the improvement Kara and the coaching Kara. And the improvement Kara is the work that you as a team member and a group would do. Uh, and the coaching kata would be the leader uh, in your organization or your group that will support this improvement work. And you need both. They should work uh, uh, together. So let's start with the improvement kata. So the improvement kata uh, is about trying to reach 
a vision of how a perfect way of working would be. Just like in karate, where you have a, a, a kata of doing a specific pattern, coming to perfection is more or less impossible. There's always something that you can improve. And this is the same. So if we want to reach this vision, uh, we need to have a current condition where we are today. We need really need to understand where we are, and then we point towards the vision. We might set up a few challenges on the way, and these challenges should be a little bit, uh, a little bit out. And between the current condition and the challenge, we set up a number of so-called target conditions. So. If we will not talk about processes here, we talk about something else that could be uh, explained this a little bit. So I would say the vision might be space exploration. And we are, the current condition would be uh, in the beginning of the end of the 50s or uh, beginning of the 60s. So we have rockets, but we can't really go out to space. So the current condition would then be uh, that we, are, uh, we have rockets and we have set forth a challenge. To the end of this decade, we should go to the moon and back. That would be a challenge. Nobody at the beginning of, of uh, uh, the 60s really knew how to get to the moon. So it was something that was really hard to strive for. So we set up a few target conditions on the way. First, we need a rocket that can lift off the ground. Then we maybe want to get it out uh, uh, into orbit. Then we need something uh, that can bring people up to orbit and then around the moon and eventually we want to land on the moon. But we don't define the exact steps immediately because we don't really know what the next step would be. But this is the basic idea of how this would work. So the Toyota Kata, the improvement Kata, has these four steps. We have understanding the direction. That is kind of defining the vision. We have grasping the current condition. Then the next part is to set the next target condition. Not all of them, but just the next. And then we experiment using either the PDCA cycle or some other improvement uh, method to go in small, small steps toward that target condition. So understanding the direction. We really need to have a common uh, view of what is the direction. Because if we don't have a common view, uh, what's the direction, what's the vision, how do we know that we are improving in that direction? If we're just collecting problems, we might go in many different directions and are actually just standing still. So if continuous delivery and delivering have a very short uh, cycle from idea to actually being in production, is, if that is the vision, then we can start solving the problems in that direction. So how does a vision really look like in terms of the Toyota Kata? It's a process vision. It's not an outcome-focused vision. So that means it's not like being the best company in the world or we will uh, change uh, the world of how you listen to music or anything like that. This is based on how your processes would work. So if we take a step back and look at what Toyota production systems vision look like. And this has, of course, been developed for the last 70 years. So uh, they put some thought into this. And they say zero defects. They say 100% value added. That means that every step that they take in the process should add value to the end product for the customer. They say one piece flow in sequence on demand. They also say security for people. So this is the process with visions for how they produce cars. So maybe this is not something uh, that can be achieved. Uh, probably not in our lifetime. Uh, maybe not in the next lifetime as well. But this is something that they strive for every, every day. 
But maybe this is not really applicable to a software context and a product development context. So how could such a vision uh, look like in a software context? Maybe zero defects in production, so we don't accept any defects to actually escape to our customers. 100% value added, I think that is still a good uh, thing of having in your vision, that all the steps you take are actually adding value to the customers. Uh, and also, highest value first on demand. So when the customer wants something, we give them what is bringing the highest value on demand. And of course, as you understand, this is very, very hard to achieve, but it's something that we will strive for. The next part is to really grasp the current condition. And grasping the current condition means that we need to understand how the process operates. So how do we do, do that? In our situation, we can't go out to the shop floor and see uh, the raw material moving up to the assembly line and see how the pieces are put together. It's actually hidden in the computers. So we need to visualize. We need to make this information visible for everyone. And one way of doing that could be using a Kanban board or something similar. Uh, or you can use radiators of other kinds, like a, a build monitor or things like that, that shows us how we really operate. And we probably need to collect some information on how the process operates in terms of uh, defects, value-added, non-value-added work, and things like that. And a very important part that comes from uh, the lean way of thinking is to actually go to the place where the work is being done. So if you are the one coaching the team and helping them, and also the team members, they should go to the place where the work is done. So if you're the line manager or uh, someone that has a leadership position, you should go to the team and see what the team does. You should be there on a daily basis. So what would we collect in terms of data? We need to d collect data and facts, uh, not trust gut feeling. So uh, just having kind of a I think, uh, I suppose it's like this, that is not really good enough. We need to collect some data. And collecting this data is the responsibility of the team, the team members. It's not the responsibility of some, someone else. So you control what data it should be collected. And it should be process metrics, uh, so we can see if we are moving towards the vision that we put forth that are the process with vision. And we also, of course, need to uh, have some outcome metrics that would be, do we deliver f uh, features or do we deliver values for our customers, and do we make money uh, as a company, organization, that actually support us uh, doing this. The next step is to define a target condition. And this is quite hard. And this is something that you do together as a team with the leaders that are providing you with the vision. So you come together and you try to formulate what is the next target condition that we want to reach. And a target condition is something that should be just beyond your knowledge uh, threshold. It should be, be beyond the horizon of what you know how to do. But not too far out. Because if it's too far out, you don't uh, feel like you can actually achieve it. And it should feel a little bit like putting a square peg in a round hole. If we go back to space and, and space exploration, do you remember from the movie Apollo 13? Where they, they come into the control room and they say, uh, we are running a little bit low on oxygen. Uh, we have a little bit high uh, carbon dioxide in, in one of the modules. Uh, we haven't really calculated that all of them should be in one part of the module and uh, 
the air filters are not working. But in the other module, we have air filters that could help us, but they are actually square. And in this module, they would fit into a round hole. So in this case, uh, they went into a room and they poured out everything they had. And they say, OK, the target condition here is to have this square fil filter work in this round hole. You have this amount of time to do it. Let's get started. And we as humans are very, very good at this. If we get a challenge that is important enough for us, we are st starting to think outside of the box and fixing the problems. So a target condition should be just like that. So the target condition should be an hypothesis on the journey towards the next challenge and vision. It should be based on your business strategy uh, and your way of thinking of what is a good and bad improvement based on your model, how you do process improvements. So if your thinking is based on agile and lean thinking, increasing the batch size of work might not be the correct next target because you want to, over time, reduce it, coming down to maybe a one-piece flow. Uh, and you should follow the Goldilocks rule. So here in Sweden, we have the very convenient uh, word lagom. Uh, and uh, in English-speaking speak uh, countries, you usually have the Goldilocks rule that would say it should not uh, be too hard and it should not be too easy. It should be just right. And of course, this is hard. So, looking at this, we are moving towards the challenge. We know our current condition, and in the traditional way of thinking, we could set up a number of target conditions, and we just kind of go through them all. But this is kind of a, yeah, not how reality works. It's more like this. You have the challenge, you have a current condition, and then you have this big unknown territory. You don't know how to, to solve this problem. So you take a first step in, and based on what happens, you make a change for the next target condition in one direction, and that may, might not work, and then you need to change it again. And hopefully, over time, you will have uh, a direction that go actually towards the challenge and onto the vision. So some examples for target conditions. Uh, the first one is maybe uh, based on your current condition, but making all work visible so you can understand how things work. So this might be a, a simple one. Uh, the next one would be maybe a little bit more uh, challenging. Reduce the lead time by, 25, by 50%. So how we need to, for a sh on a short time, reduce the average lead time by 50%. Also reduce your work in process by 25%. That could also be quite challenging and still keeping up making money and, and uh, delivering things. And de deploy to production every two weeks. For a company that I work for now that deploys uh, to production every six months, this would be a tremendous challenge. The last one, implementing specification by example or something similar where you move things from the end of the value chain to the beginning so you can actually execute faster. And the next one is to start executing uh, towards the target condition and that would go through PDCA cycles. Do we know what the PDCA cycles are? No? It's plan do, check, act. So it's more or less the uh, scientific method again. And this is the method that's been used uh, in companies like Toyota for quite some time. Uh, and it's called the PDCA cycle. And then, then again, we have the same kind of thing. We have a current condition. We have a target condition that we want to move towards. Uh, it could be thinking it's a straight line again, but of course it's the unknown thing again. And we do run an experiment, and that is experiment is 
actually not giving us at all the result we were expecting and are not moving in the right direction at all. So we need to take a new step back and we take a new path through this t uh, territory of the unknown. So the experiment should be something that you adjust based on what just happened uh, and you adjust your hypothesis. Uh, and you need to go to the place where this is done and execute this uh, in the environment uh, where the team is. So, let's take a look at the coaching kata. This is the supporting uh, kata, especially to the, the last step, the experimentation step in uh, the improvement kata. So, the coaching kata is something that is run by the leaders, either a team leader, scrum master, uh, the line manager, uh, the uh, section managers, and so forth. That is supporting in a coaching manner uh, the team who executes the work. And this should be the leaders and the coach should give a helping hand. They are probably knowledgeable about the process and can help out and support it, but they should not do the actual work. It should also be giving a push in the right direction. So if we have a business model that says, uh, and a business strategy that says that we are working in a lean fashion, we should do improvement that is based on the lean thinking. And the kata for the coach is to follow mainly these five questions. So the first question would be, and this will be repeated at every coaching session, and the coaching sessions would be, uh, Typically, what I've seen in software development is either once a week or maybe two times or even two times a week or once every day, depending on how much change you can see in your processes. When I went to uh, a Toyota Kata training, we actually executed uh, five experiments, uh, going through five cycles in one day at the shop floor at Volvo Cars and we made small, small adjustments uh, between those five, uh, five sessions. But I think in software development, in the long process cycles that we have, uh, once a week or maybe twice a week is uh, appropriate. And you go through these question, questions every time. So you start by asking, what is the target condition? And the reason for this is that you will repeat with the group and the, the people doing the actual work, what is the target that we are trying to achieve next? So you kind of solidify that in your mind all the time, so you don't lose focus. The next one is, what's the actual current condition? condition? So you should be able to answer the questions, how is the process operating at this stage? And that means that you collect data and uh, maybe have a visualization and you can talk about how that works. And you want to focus on uh, having real data and facts that can you talk about, not based on uh, feelings and intuitions. Question number three, what, is the obst uh, what obstacles do you think are preventing you from reaching the target condition? Which one are you addressing right now? <coughs> and this about, so you only want to address the problems that are in the immediate uh, blocking you from achieving the target condition. There might be many other problems that you want to address, but the target condition that we try to move towards today we only want to solve the problems that are preventing us from reaching that target condition. So when we reach that target condition, we can actually change the target condition to something else that would address the other problems that we also want to eliminate. And we want to kind of focus on fixing one problem at a time. So if we go back to, to uh, Kanban and the Kanban method, this is about lowering the, uh, the amount of work in progress or the whip that we have currently uh, in our process and the way of working. Questions number four, what is your next step? What is the next experiment do you want to, uh, that you want to run? And what do you expect? This is a very important part of this question here, is to define what you 
would expect from running this experiment. Because if we don't state this, we don't have the same opportunity for a learning when we have actually have collected the data and look at what really happens. And then the next one would be, when can we go and see what, ha what we have learned from taking that step? That is so you want to have a defined date when you come back and look at this again. And this could, of course, vary. Som sometimes you will say, uh, tomorrow, or later this day, or next week. But it should be on a very high frequency. Longer than a week, you will tend to not do your daily improvement work, and you actually push it off to the end of, of, of the review cycle. And the back side of this card, you can also, there's uh, four more questions that you, uh, based on when you have done an experiment. So you say, what was your last step? And then the learner uh, repeats, what was the last step? What did you expect? What really happened? And what did you learn? So this is really about continuous learning. As we try to improve our system, we also create learning in the organization. So, let's dive into a practical uh, example here. So this might be a Kanban team that uh, are working on continuous improvement. Uh, and uh, the gentleman here with the beard and uh, the nice glasses and things like that, he says, so what are the how are the daily meetings going? And the, in this case, it's the Scrum Master or the Kanban Master or whatever you want to call it. Uh, good, we are taking small steps in the right direction. Uh, I have observed that and I agree. Uh, you are starting to make small steps every way and small experiments that probe your way towards the target condition. So small steps every day, that is uh, the preferred way of doing it. So what is the target condition that you're currently working on? Reducing the lead time by four, four days. And this could be a supporting form that could help you uh, when you're doing this work. So you have, on this side here, you will have the current condition, and this would be updated uh, every, for every coaching session. And you also, on the other side here, has the, le the, the target condition that would specify how we want the process to operate. And in this case, we highlight the things that we want to change. What's the actual target? What are the things that we want to change uh, in this target condition? And that means that the rest of the things that we have here should stay the same. So, for instance, customer satisfaction, we want to have that on a constant level when we make these changes. Otherwise, if we don't have balancing things uh, in the process, it, it could be easy to cut corners just to reach the target, but we are actually sacrificing something else. So in this case, we just want to increase, uh, decrease the lead time. So what is the actual condition now? We are almost there on the small user stories, but not on the medium and large. Can you show me the data? And this is the important part. We don't just trust uh, gut feeling and things like that. We need to see the data and collect the data. And that might be that we are collecting them in kind of a spreadsheet manner like this. It could be on the board, maybe a control chart, uh, or anything like that that would help us to understand how the process operates. And this should be collected by the team, no one else. So the team owns this information uh, and will help the team to understand if they are improving or not. What obstacles are, uh, are now preventing you from reaching the target condition? We have identified the following obstacles and we can have a list of them. Uh, and which one are you addressing now? The test setup time. What was your last step? Document the setup process to create more understanding, more learning. 
What actually happened? As we went through the test setup, we documented every, uh, every step. So now they have a better feeling for what are the actual steps to do this. What did you learn? And then you can use this uh, supporting form. That would be, what is the step that you're, you're doing? What you expected to happen? The actual results that we observed. In this case, many steps are done manually, even if they can be automated. And what uh, have we learned? Many of the steps can be automated with small changes to the current setup process. So what is your next step? Automate large parts of the test setup. Hmm, sounds like a major step. Can you really do this in a week or a few days? Smaller steps are actually preferred. Yes, I guess it is. Uh, so what could be a smaller step? Maybe we just automate the, set, uh, the, the setup of the test database as a first step and see what happens. Maybe that actually solves, uh, so we reach the target condition that we have set up. Good. What results do you expect? We expect to half the setup time for the test database. When can we go and see uh, what we have learned from taking this step? In one week. And the focus here is to get to the execution part as soon as possible, execute and see what happens. And that doesn't mean that we always need to reach what we have expected, but we say we set the new time and we come to that point and we reflect what happened. And then we can say if we didn't make uh, or able to reach the, the, the experiment, we have an opportunity to explore why we didn't reach uh, uh, we're able to execute the experiment and uh, get the result that we are expecting. So we can learn all the time. Good. See you in one week. So to summarize, how are we on time? Uh, quite good, I think. Uh, create organizational muscle memory for continuous delivery. This is truly the key for the Toyota Kara. It should be feel very comfortable and you know what to expect will happen next when you are working with the improvement. But of course, the, the actual experiments will be different every, every time, more or less. And I talk about this as experiments. So I think the improvement work should be uh, treated as experiments or using the scientific method, and you set up a hypothesis that you are testing. So you create familiar routines or habits uh, as you probe through the unknown. Because the Toyota Kata is not knowing what the next step is. You need to kind of step into the unknown and try it out and see what happens. But you really need to step in there and see what happens. So one question that I, that I often get is the exact Kadas described as I've done them, uh, important? Yes, but having the routines is more important. So if you find another routine that works for you, just sticking to a routine to creating kind of the muscle memory in your organization is more important uh, than running this specific routine. But having one is very important. And you try to even in that case, strive for perfection, not just uh, improving your process, but also how you do the improvement work. And another statement or a question I often get is, so Toyota Kara and this lean stuff may work for building cars, but we are developing software. So my experience, Toyota can really be applied and has been successfully in other domains. This is more of an, on a meta level, and it's not about just making the cars. This is a method that Toyota uses in all the levels of their organization, including their product development uh, organization. Uh, 
And I also know about uh, some American companies that have actually tried to run this for a while, and I've also used it for some of my customers uh, and had some success of doing this. But of course, just like everything else, just like when you do uh, a kata in karate, it takes time to come to perfection of doing this. So you need to practice and practice and practice. So in my case, I think a Kanban kata or Toyota kata really rocks. Uh, and I hope you think the same. Here are the treasure map for uh, discovering more about uh, the Toyota kata. Uh, and I'm now open for questions. Any questions? Yes, I did. My, my son actually helped me with the, the movie in the beginning. So he, he, and he, I borrowed some of the Lego from, uh, from his uh, Lego. So the deal is I borrow the Lego from him, and I buy some new models. And when I'm done doing this presentation, he gets it all. So he doesn't want me to, to talk about this stuff anymore. Any other questions? Yes? Okay, so the question is, how much would the improvement time be compared to the development time, and how do you get this into the budget? So, uh, Mike Rodgers, who has written the book about Toyota Kara, uh, uh, I, he made a statement something like this. Uh, if you can't make the time to do improvement work, you truly have a problem. Because the idea here is to improve the work so you can produce more. So it's like uh, uh, the story about uh, uh, whatever it's called, the timberman cutting down trees. So if you're just standing there shopping with your axe, Eventually, it will actually not be a very good axe. So you need to stop and sharpen your axe. And some say that you should sharpen your axe as much as one-third of the time, because then you get the most out of it when you're chopping down trees. So you should think about it. If you make a small investment in doing improvement, it should immediately give you more uh, time to work on uh, the things that really matter for your customer. So if you can re reduce the defects in the system by improving something, then you can spend more time of developing features. But of course, it's a step to get started. Uh, and you need some buy-in uh, from your management to do this. But usually, it's not that hard. If you spend five minutes a day, and you try to, to make your day one minute more efficient, and you take 50% of that the next day, so you have five and a half minutes to improve, and you do that on a daily basis over a year, you get more and more uh, done, and you have more time to do improvements. And of course, eventually you, may you might not need more time to do the improvement, and you can focus, uh, you can have just a limited time to do the improvements. But I think in, in Toyota they talk about something like five to 10% of the time on the, the production line is spent doing process improvements every day. And what I've seen in product development, I would say something between 10 to 20% should be spent on process improvement and product improvements. Any other questions, reflections? Yes? Yes, so Toyota had uh, quite a few um, cars that were returned due to defects. So that means that they are not perfect either. They have been just been working with this in 70 years. They have definitely not reached, uh, reached a vision, so they need to improve more. Uh, so just like any other company or persons, we are not perfect. We need to improve all the time. And what they actually, uh, if we think about the acceleration problem that they had with uh, some of the cars, uh, 
they immediately stopped and kind of recognized that this is a potential problem. And they actually stopped the production of cars for three months and just focused on understanding this problem. But it actually turned out it was not due to the car, uh, how it was built by Toyota. It was uh, mats, floor mats that the customer bought and put in their own cars that was not from Toyota that was causing these problems. Uh, so what they did was to actually uh, start thinking about how are they reacting to these kind of problems in a different way uh, and not being uh, overreacting to these kind of situations. More questions? Reflections? Yes? Yes? So the question is about who's setting the vision and the uh, challenges. And maybe in Sweden we use this in a kind of a cooperative manner, a consensus model. Uh, and in other countries it might not be like that. And I don't really, s so I prefer the consensus model and kind of uh, having the managers, the leaders coming out to the teams and being with the teams and talking about this in a dialogue. But eventually the leaders in the organization should be the ones that are uh, helping you to define uh, the direction that we want to move. So in Toyota they have this chief engineer, so he's responsible for uh, producing a car, uh, building a new car model. Uh, and he builds all the decisions based on consensus more or less, but if the, the team and the organization is not in agreement, he has the final say and puts down the direction that they want to move. And usually he never needs to do that. I'm not sure if that answered your question, but yeah, yeah, but I, I think it's if you start going down this path, you start to cooperate more and discuss these things more uh, in your company. And of course, setting the vision and the challenge is very hard. Uh, on one uh, team that I'm currently coaching, we couldn't really define the vision, but then it's important not make that make stop you and get started. We kind of. So let's have a, a first hypothesis of the vision uh, and then we just start moving towards that because the learning is and creating the habits, it more, it's more uh, important than just having the truly correct vision in the beginning. Other questions or reflections? Yes? So the question was that different teams uh, could have different challenges, uh, different problems that they uh, need to solve. So how do you prioritize and set the vision? And here again, I would say it's more important to actually try to improve. And if you have a shared vision in the company where you want to move towards, uh, then sometimes you might want, you need to uh, take a step back in one part of the organization to be able to take two steps forward in the future. But it, the most important part is to actually do the improvements. It's not that important that you do the right improvement. Because when you've taken the first step, and you kind of observe where you are, and the, the vision is still over there, then you might address the problem, the, the right problem, the next time. So it's more important to taking a small step every day uh, and improve how you do your working. Um, and the prioritization of what to do should be in cooperation between the coach and the learners. Other questions? Reflections? Yes, up there. When you start coaching a new team, don't you uh, get the feedback that maybe uh, gathering so much data and analyzing data and doing these new forms is a waste of time? 
So the question was, when you start doing this, collecting all this data and filling it out these, all these forms, it's, uh, it's a waste of time. Uh, so the team I'm currently working with, we're collecting very uh, little data in the beginning. So the only thing we're collecting right now is the number of tickets of unplanned work. And what's the reason for these uh, number of tickets? And we want to reduce them because it's unplanned work. We want to have more prediction on how we work. So that is the only data that we're co co collecting at the moment. So it depends on how, how elaborate you want to be in the beginning. And, and in the beginning, start easy, make small steps, uh, have the simplest possible way of measuring things, and then start expanding as you learn more. How are we on time? Well, out of time, but the, the next session starts at 3.35, there's coffee in between. So ah. we're, we're one minute over, right? Okay. I'll go to this slide. Thank you so much for attending. If you have any more questions, do you want to discuss this? Every Wednesday at the coffee, uh, the cafe at the Waterfront Building on uh, Klarabergs Viadukten 61, we have something that we call uh, Lean Coffee, and we tend to discuss these kind of subjects, other things about uh, Lean and Agile, in a, a small open space fashion. So every Wednesday between 8 and 9.30, we do these discussions. And if you want to uh, ask me any more questions, I will be here for a few more minutes or in the Avega uh, unbooth. Uh, on the balcony upstairs here for the rest of the day. Thank you so much.